What's going, going on? on? What's going on? What's up, car folks? Guys and car gals, this is. Ooh. Lou Ramirez, the car guy. And this is Fred and Arsene Subprime Hero. And we are Brewing Solutions on the Car Guy Coffee Podcast. And we are super pumped up to have a great conversation with an incredible, incredible individual that loves to roll with the champions. And I love it. Folks, there is so much that's going on in, in everybody's world right now. And we are excited to just have a quick cup of coffee and a conversation with no a solutionary. Is. We are excited to be brewing solutions with the best. This brew has been brought to you by Think Ad Group, Dealership Toolkit, Exo Gloss, and Next Sale App. Let's brew! Without further ado, car guys and car gals, we are going to be bringing to you <coughs> the incredible brew that is on its way. I don't know how you're watching this, this, if it's on a phone, if it's on a computer screen, if it's on a desktop, if it's on a laptop, if it's on an iPad, wherever it is, it probably has the same button somewhere. And it's the share button. Share it real quick. <laughs> Give it a quick share because this is an incredible solutionary that's coming through and bringing a oh, solution yeah. to you. He's bringing you solutions just like this. <laughs> we are so getting ready to go. Car guys, car guys. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? That was so awesome. I know you all heard it in the background. Uh, it was that lady's uh, voice go. <laughs> What was that? You know, hey, I don't blame hey. him. If I was watching Car Guy Coffee, I'd make the same noise, right? So, <laughs> folks, good morning, good morning, good morning. We're so excited. We got, we have some guests in here already this morning. We got Jay Woolridge. Thank yes, you so welcome. much for being here. Charles Higgins, my man. Welcome. Robert, Robert Jacko. I know Robert Jacko is a great person. I know that actually he knows Blake. And, uh, you know, I, man, there's a lot of great words I can say about Robert Jacko. He's somebody I've had a great conversation with. I've seen him do some amazing stuff. So thanks for being here this morning, Robert. You're a great guy. We also got... DJ up in the heezy. I thank you for sending out some names. He put Rudy's name in there, that's Michelle Matisse. See, yes. That's Bruin Solutions. That's folks. my dude. So speaking of Bruin Solutions, we got a solutionary inside of the building. He's in the back room, but we are about to bring him through right now. Car guys, car gals, and all you solutionaries out there, do us a quick favor and welcome Blake No. Oh, he even got he even got his hoodie on now. He tried to feel he, he's getting his, he's getting where he fits in, right? Oh, you guys can see that this guy's got good taste in football, right? He he knows who the team is. Matter of fact, he's a, he didn't just pick it because he's a bandwagon guy. The guy went to school in Alabama. I mean, that he is alumni. He believes in the program not just for football, but in every sport they do. He believes in that school and he'll do anything he can to help promote that school. And I love that. And he's very true pride in that that crimson tide, you know what I mean? So I love that. So welcome to the team. Welcome to the cafe. Let's get this day going. What's up, Blake? Not much, guys. Just uh Glad to be home finally. I, it was a lo- long day yesterday. It was in was in two different states. Uh, woke up in the Gulf of Mexico and and uh, uh, on the beach and meeting with a big dealer group down there and and then had to drop my partner off the airport and come back up to uh, Birmingham, headed to Atlanta tomorrow. Though, man, so, that's awesome. You yeah. are busy. I know you've been hustling, 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 man, and that's the only way to be. You know, and, and I see that you do that. You don't just do that with business. You also do that in your personal, like you, with the way you work out, with all those things. I know you just finished the 75 strong. Congratulations on that, man. I know that that was, that's a hard task to, to accomplish. That's two days. That's two times a day, one inside, one outside workout. And that's no drinking. That's reading a book. That's so many things involved in that to help you grow. And you did that and you did it like a gentleman, man. You, you crushed it. So way to go, bro. And for anybody out there thinking about doing it, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a life changer. I mean, it really, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm borderline. It's a, it's a big commitment, but I'm borderline right now. Big commitment, yes. Um, do people fail and have to start over? Yes. Uh, you know, I think I read the book. It, like, th- like three percent of people actually finish the program. Uh, yeah. But it, you know, it, it gets the, those habits that you should be doing uh, kind of ingrained in you. Uh, and they say it takes sixty six days to to form a habit. Well, you're doing this for seventy five days. You know. I agree with that because, you know, and, and there's no doubt in my mind it takes a long time. Now, you can 
you can start things, but in order to be, make it a real true body habit, it does take about 66 days. I've read different stories about how long it takes. Some people say it takes a full 90 days, not 87. Not, I've heard that before. I've heard, I've heard 15 days. I've heard all these different ones, but I honestly believe you hitting it right on the number about 66 days. You know, when you get into that little over a two month mark, you start to, should I keep going? And then if, once you break through that threshold, you're there, man. And you're definitely doing that, man. You look good too, bro. Looking Thanks. like you're in good shape. You look like you're ready to go. You're ready to just throw some hands and stuff. Let's make this happen, man. <laughs> so, you know, we, we like to have a lot of fun here at the cafe, man. And we're going to ask you some questions. And these questions are about how you got to where you're at today, you know. And my very first question I like to ask everybody is the same one. But before we do all these questions, we always like – we got we are going to throw hands. And what we do is we're going to do the forgive, focus, fly with you, That's my friend. Right. So important to do. And I'm going to have Lou break it down for you real quick. So – I'm sure that you've ran into a few situations where you've fallen a little short or somebody's shorted you. Sure that you've ran into situations that you have had to forgive others when maybe they didn't deserve it because you've been forgiven because you can really, we can truly never really earn it. Right. It's a decision that comes from you to you and to others. And that's to forgive Otherwise, the weight of unforgiveness will stop you from accomplishing what it is that you want to accomplish inside of your life, and you won't be able to fly <laughs> being weighed down. So we apply three Fs. We forgive first. We then focus on where it is that we want to go. So we forgive it, then we focus, and then we aim out and we fly, and then we keep growing, keep growing, and we keep doing bigger things the more that we Forgive others and focus on what it is that we can do together. But usually, once we're in a lifestyle of forgiving other people, then the hardest thing to forgive is yourself. You know, I know that I could have put a little bit more in today. I know that I could have, uh, I could have gotten that project done, or I could have put in that extra rep, or I could have read that extra book, or I could have got that extra deal, or whatever it is. Car guys, car guys, you know where it is that you fall short on the daily basis. We want to make sure that we continuously encourage you. Two, focus on what you can improve on right now because the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement, you know, and, right. and folks, it, that's what it's all about. And the more you can improve, the better it can be. And that's what's so beautiful about the, the three Fs, man. It that's can right. really, it can really, if you break it down logically and you think simple, it's those three words. It is that simple. You just need to forgive. You really do. Forgive everything, man. Let it go. Focus. Focus on what you want. Blake knows what I'm talking about. That's Blake right. focuses his ass off, man. And you know, seriously, I mean, guys, if you guys haven't watched Blake in the last – I've been seriously. paying attention to him for the last basically year. I've seen where he's been going. I see where he's trying to get to, and he's doing it. And he's doing it with class. You know, he comes from a good pedigree of car people too. That's not – you know, so he – it's it's almost like pressure on him to do well, but he's but he's doing it in his own way. He's not doing it in the same path as his what, what his predecessors were. He's doing it his own way. He's carving his own path. He's taking the path – of that was least taken, right? I love that about Blake. So thank you for being here this morning. And let's get this forget focus let's fly thing going, let's man. Let's go do it. Cross your arms with me let's real quick. On three, we're gonna wipe it off. We're gonna focus and we're gonna fly. One, two, three, forgive. Focus. Fly. And keep growing. Keep growing. Keep. Yeah. What's up? Here there we go. Is. We got Blake in the house. Ready you are now in the team. You are part of the cafe official forever. You are now a car guy. Copy approved. Uh, let's make this happen, my friend. I'm pumped up. We're going to ask you these five questions. These five questions are fun. The first question is always the same one. It's your why. What is the way that, what is the purpose? What makes you wake up every day and say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it the best that I possibly can. I'm going to make sure that I am going to stay growing. What is that? Um, it, just to, to maximize my potential, my God given potential, you know, mm. and, and, and really, you know, focus on, you know, typically four or five different areas of my life, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, you know, obviously financially, um, you know, and, and, and help my team grow, be, be a, you know, a team player, put the team first, uh, and really go out and, you know, win the day that I, you know, the people talk about New Year's resolutions. I talk about winning the day. Come on. I love it. That's, oh, 
Love it, love it, love it. Small accomplishments become big accomplishments. Daily accomplishments become weekly accomplishments, which turns into monthly accomplishments, which turns into a year of just amazing work, folks. It it always seems like it takes so long to do something. Oh, this whole year. No. Years go by fast. Folks, we can attest to every year seems faster than the last one. 2020 flew by. 2021 is already over a month old, folks. We're into the second month already. What are you doing? If we learn anything from 2020 is like, you know, we, we can't take the day for granted. You know, we, we've got to be grateful. We've got to wake up with an attitude of gratitude and, 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 and not, not take your health for granted. That's for sure. Not, you know, <laughs> not take life for granted and, and, and just, just go out and win the day. Dude, love it, man. You, you got a great, great attitude, and you definitely always have, man. I like it, man. You got, you almost got that um, surfer feel to you, even though you're from Alabama. But you've been up to the coast quite a bit. You really do. You got that, you know, hang loose feel, you know. And I, I like I, that. I, I'm from LA, but I've spent a lot of time in LA, my friend. Ah. Now it all makes it all makes all the sense in the world. Now I get the vibe of you, man, and I love that vibe. It's a very low it's a very true vibe. In LA, I'm, I'm talking about Lower Alabama, but I've spent a lot of time on. Yeah, I knew I had a feeling you were gonna hit me with that, dude. You know what's so funny is that I was in the Air Force many years ago, right? And when I joined, hey. this is in the '90s, and my when I was at technical school, there, one of my favorite instructors of all time, I can't remember his name, and I wish I did. But he would always he, – first time we met him, we're in class. He was, you know, teaching us electro- – I did electronics on jets. So he's teaching us electronic stuff. And he was like, hey, man. You know, you got that accent. Hey, man, listen. Y'all hey, know man. where I'm from? We're like, no, where are you from? He goes, I'm from L.A. And he said, I was like, really? What? Seriously? He goes, no, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Los Angeles goes, no, nah, man. Lower Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely loved it. That's the first time I ever heard that. And this is like yeah. in 97. And I he was so funny and he was so cool. That personality, having that – that lower Alabama accent, that lower Alabama lifestyle, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's very much like a Southern California lifestyle. Very relaxed, you know. Enjoy life. The weather's great. We're gonna just do things, you know. And when I was out in LA working at this big dealership out there, that they actually had a salesman there. Um, that, that his name was Alabama, and the guy sold like fifty cars a month. But they, he was from Alabama, and they <laughs> called him Alabama. <laughs> 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 you know, it's supposed to be a different place whenever you get like right, right. if you're from Kentucky, that's when you call somebody Alabama. <laughs> so like, no, I think that's awesome. Though, Fifty cars a month. That's because he's from Alabama. 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 Where you all want to go? I'm gonna go Greenbow, Alabama. Alabama. So no man, that's really awesome. You know, you, you definitely uh you definitely have that swag about you and I love it, man. And that, and that's something that I always liked about you because you're just you're so just Cool, and I'm sure that it works really well with you when you go talk to dealers. They probably love it because they don't feel pressure from you at all. They just feel like you just want to help, and you're re- and you and you're willing to do it with a with a good attitude. And I love and, that. And willing to walk a mile in their shoes, you know. I think that's yes, that's, sir. that's that's big too. You know, it is, man. No doubt about it. I mean, that's that's what it's like when you really build relationships, right? You really build relationships rather than seek revenue. Right. You know, the the way that that we were taught in well, in many cases was grow up, pick a job that makes a lot of money, do it, and repeat the cycle again and again. You know, <laughs> no dreams, no no nothing, fit into the box this way, and this is how the education system's going to have to work so that you can do a thing. Yep. Well, all of those molds have been broken over time, whether it's been in sports or it's been in the automotive industry or it's been in any sort of creative or entertainment. People have been breaking the mold constantly because there really isn't a limit to us except us. Our own. Yeah, we limit ourselves. We're the ones that put the the stop on what it is that we can actually do. And, it it, you know, different things influence us. Sometimes we do incredible things because we constantly have people pouring into us. We constantly have good coaches. We constantly have good friends and mentors. We constantly have good books, you know, mentors in a box. Right, that are pouring into us. We we constantly have an uh, a podcast in the ear, like the Car Guy Coffee podcast. Anyway, but we constantly have something going inside of us that is making us be better, and that's often what's going to pour back out of that cup. Same thing on any level. But if you don't cultivate that, you can grow a lot of a lot of weeds. You can get stagnated. And during during the COVID, it was easy. You said guard your health, mainly because it's so easy to not do anything. 
It was so easy for people to not do anything in their business, in their career. And this is where that's where people, I think, felt it the worst is that they felt on um, like like they're not being completed. They're not being used. You know, a, a person on a team wants to feel like they're part of a team. Right. A person that's accomplishing a goal together wants to feel like they're part of accomplishing that goal together. Whether you sat on the sideline or you were in the game, you know, from beginning to end, you, you got the same ring. But there's something different when you feel as though you were part of the team. And you can still be on the sideline and never play it down. Right. And, and it, it be an actual contributor to the team and it's uh, and and the atmosphere right and still get a championship completely ring. there <laughs> everybody wants everybody wants that everybody wants that opportunity to be part of a team and i'm so glad that, that you're bringing that in and, and this, that culture is getting shifted around because ultimately what we're trying to do is accomplish a goal for the buyer the, right. per, the person doing business we're trying to accomplish their goal yep and the dealer is trying to get in line with that goal right and be able to right fit it, facilitate it, and make it in a streamlined process as smooth as possible. Smooth. Operator. Fake Norberg sitting right here, just chilling, <laughs> keeping it hanging loose, right? But I want to ask you this: What was it that made made you make the transition into the automotive industry that is make, allowing all of these experiences to start to weld together? What was it that brought you? In the car business. I mean, literally, I grew up on a showroom floor. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I was I, I was rummaging through some stuff, and this is an ad from back in the oh, wow. 80s. Uh, uh, my father did a training session with uh, the Alpha Dog. Um, wow. And what's crazy is this is me <laughs> in the what? ad. Put that up further on the screen. Put, put that up further. Oh, like, dude, that is that. the coolest is thing so awesome. in the freaking world, bro. Wow, look at that car behind you. <laughs> That's wow. so awesome. Man, dude, look at you. You were you were born to sell. You came out with, with your hand out like, how you doing today, sir? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got this frame somewhere, but um, I, 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 I it's not here at, at this office right now. But um, I, I did not want to get in the car business, man. I, I grew up around it, you know, it, I, I didn't see my father for four or five days. He'd go out on the road and hustle and, you know, sell credit insurance back in the 80s when, when everybody had credit insurance on their loan, um, whether they knew it or not. <laughs> 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 so true, so true. And then he got into the Gap when Gap came around. I mean, he rode the waves, and, and, and I saw him do just amazing things, and, and I did not want to get in the car business and actually started in the – the mortgage business. And then, uh, I got kind of frustrated with that. And he, my dad said, well, you need to go talk to this big warranty company and at least hear him out. And they, they put me in a car dealership for a weekend and, and, uh, you know, asked me to take notes what I saw about the F and I office. And then I started out as one of those, uh, what they call a rent Orion where you, you, you travel, uh, all over the country and, uh, you either sink or swim. You go and work and, and do finance at a dealership. Um, so I got I got to learn everything from washing, do what from you know, do everything with washing cars, help wash cars, sell cars, desk deals. So I learned the F and I side, and I got really good at that. And, and then, um, and then and then Mama called, just like you know, you hear Bear Bryant. Mom called, and and I, I worked in Atlanta for a couple of years with a big warranty company, and, and uh, handled some big stores like Penske and Carl Black, and. And, and then I came back and worked with my father for 10 years. Uh, it worked at every one of his dealerships, you know, did, did a week here, did a week, a weekend there, helped him develop some more, you know, income streams. And, and then I just kind of got, got complacent, you know, I wanted to go do something else. I mean, you know, I, and I, that's when I met another guy in the car business who also had a father that had about 35 dealerships and he taught me the, the digital marketing side and, and, uh, so I took a leap of faith, and and and, and as Steve Harvey says, uh, I I I, uh, I jumped off the cliff, you know, and, and did my own thing. <laughs> I love it, man. I love the quote. And, Steve and, Harvey's got some good ones. <laughs> and, 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 uh, you know, the parachute didn't open at first, and then I, I got really good at selling websites, and they sold the company, and uh, had kind of had the rug pulled out from underneath me. Um, you, you like you said, you got to forgive and forget. You know, and man, I, I, I landed. I, I this I pre-check program that we're going to talk about at some point. 
solution, you know, landed in my lap. I vetted it through one of my best friends in the car business and, and I went all in and sold my way back, gentlemen. And hey, that's and it's you're just and it's just the beginning of the rise, you know. And I think that you you got something here, and I think that you're very passionate about it. The thing is about anything is, if you have passion, it will do something great. You have to put the time in, put the work in, and you will get back everything you put into it if you believe in that product. And I and I know you do, and that's that's awesome, man. And I, and the story of going through all those things, getting into the business. You're right, you know. When your parents are in the business, a lot of times you're like, I ain't going to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to do something my own. But then, you know, you go off, you try, and then you realize, man, this business, and that's the thing about the car business. It's very difficult. It's, it's not, excuse me. It's very easy to get attached to the car business because right. there's so many different avenues that you can be part of it, right? You can, you can be F and I. You could be a salesperson. You can be clean up. You can own a detail department if you want. You, there's so many levels of each one of those spots too, right? And then, you know, being an owner, then being a vendor, you know, and becoming a vendor can be a big deal too. Cause that can, that opens you up to the whole nation. And, 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 and being, let me, you know, being a vendor can be, you know, a lot of people that make the transition from the retail side to the vendor side are, are you get a rude awakening because it, it is, it, it is tough when you, when you have, you know, door slam people, you know, that cut you off or, you know, say no. And, and sometimes it takes four or five, you know, t- it takes a lot of persistence, you know, it does. And, you know and, you're right. And, and, and you're not, you don't have the, the up bus just, you know, unloading <laughs> leads on you. You got to sometimes right. gen- run to generate your own leads, which I think the, the, the best salesman in the car business, by the way, are those ones that use tools like Next Sale or, or Facebook to, you know, generate their own leads? Uh, and and I, I just did a call this morning with LinkedIn on on how to generate more leads through LinkedIn by, you know, it, it takes work. Um, you know, and you guys did, have done a phenomenal job with, you know, with what you guys do, and uh, that's why I wanted to come on and. And, and and be with you guys and learn from the best, you know? Yeah, dude, it's good. You know, when you feed off each other, best yes. feed off each other, you learn ideas and you share ideas and you grow. Yes, we do work our asses off. But, you know, we do that because we love, we have the same kind of passion you have yes. for what we do. You know, we, we want to get it out there. We want to get people like you and, and get people to hear the stories, you know, about yeah. how you can do this, how you can work for a company. Company could just dump itself and say, you know what, you don't have a job anymore. And you, you, you like you said, you forgave, you forgot, and you went ahead and focused on what you wanted. You found, you found I pre-check, bro. And then you're like, I'm going to explode this, and I'm going to fly with this. And you did that. Kudos to you for that. The story is amazing. I love all the stuff that you're talking about here because you're bringing up some really good points. You're bringing up things that people need to hear because it's not always easy. It's not always the path of least resistance. Matter of fact, the path of least resistance sucks. There's nothing there for you. You don't grow. You just stay constant. You're just comfortable who wants to be comfortable i mean don't get me wrong that word comfortable sounds really good you know having your blanket you feel great but folks when you want to grow there's no way that comfortable is going to work for you no think of comfortable is a bad word if you can change that in your brain because when you want to if your body is changing and you're trying to do the 75 hard you can't be comfortable doing 75 hard you can't yeah. be comfortable doing 10 hard right you gotta you gotta do you have to work your body to pass its its breaking point those, it's like doing push-ups. When you're doing push-ups, if you stop right when it started hurting, you didn't gain anything. You have to push through that pain. You have to keep pushing until you can't do till we, what I call muscle failure. When muscle you just, failure. That is when you get results. The only way you get results is through the uncomfortable. So Blake is showing that. Blake, I think that that business doing what it did was the best thing ever that could have happened for you because you probably at one point, and I'm going to guess, you were getting comfortable there. You were doing really well. You were doing fine, and all of a sudden you were like – swept they they just took that rug from underneath your feet and you're like whoa what am i going to do uncomfortable and then you grew from that and look at you you got a smile on your face you just knocked out 75 hard this year you're doing more things than than you could ever imagine and you're doing it and it was like no big deal on to the next thing right and i'm gonna keep going and i'm gonna keep going and then there's phase and then there's phase one where you take the five minute cold shower so that's talking talking so now you're really starting to yeah, I forgot about that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's I, you know I try to do that. Like Tony Robbins talks about cold showers too. He says that it's it's like you you take these you take these cold showers. It energizes you. It bring, it wakes you up. It does all this stuff. I try to do it. Woo! <laughs> like, it, 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 it the first minute, if you can get past the first minute, you, you know, and it's all about the breathing. I think. Yeah. 
you know, it's not so bad. And especially after you read those, uh, the, you know, you read David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me, and, and they're, uh, and, you, and you, and when they're going through the SEAL training, you know, swimming out, it, 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 you know, that, 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 that's, that's, that, that's tough. <laughs> SEAL training, yeah. David, David Goggins does, knows what he's talking about. Absolutely amazing person. You know, you want to talk about somebody who stays uncomfortable. That is the, that is yeah. the definition yeah. of uncomfortable. This guy goes, he makes all this stuff look easy. You know, he does. And, and it's true though. <laughs> But that's the thing, like, you know, we, we as human beings, we kind of got into comfort levels in life. We all, under, we all, we have AC in our house. We have, you know, a refrigerator in our house. We have a bathroom, multitude of bathrooms in your house. There was a time in this world, not that long ago, where you all had to go outside to use the bathroom. We all had to get running water from the freaking, you didn't have running water. You went to the freaking pond or you went to the spring and you pulled up water for the day and you drank that water and that's what you used to cook, eat, clean, all that stuff. And, Life was not easy. Air conditioning was non-existent. A refrigerator? Come on. People had to eat their food what they had. That was it. Whatever you ate, it was it was good until it was bad. There was no that's put it in a refrigerator. For a lot of people and right still now. I mean that the world right still now. has that going on. You know, we're very fortunate here in the beautiful country of the United States that we have some amenities that are just way above and beyond what most people in the world have that are standard amenities to us. To other people, that is luxury, like straight up luxury to have a more than one bathroom in the house. A bathroom that runs in the house. You know, anyway, <laughs> I don't want to get too deep about that. But, you know, Blake, there's there's a lot of things that we do when we get in this business. And there's and there's people that we meet when we get in this business. And I know that your father is a big, big influence on you. And I obviously, you already kind of threw his name in there when he was telling you, hey, you go check out this warranty company. But as you were coming up in this game, I know you got friends. And I, I know you got, you know, other people that you would consider, like, Good, good car people or good business people or somebody who was a good mentor out of all of them, you know, you don't have to pick one, but if there was one, who would it be? You know, who's that one guy that really helps you make that pivot? Um, there, there, there's, there's a, a couple of guys. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I have a, a buddy. He's, he's, he, he helped, uh, um, grow the website company, um, uh, a guy named Brett Sutherland, he, he, he kind of had a, a really, you know, big effect on me on, on really be becoming a, a sales machine, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, unleashing the, the 10 X within me, I guess, you know, getting me, you know, turned on to Cardone university, turned right. on the 10 X, you know, I, I've had some other guys like Dave Anderson come into my life, you know, um, Chris Martinez, I, I've been, you know, if, if you really want to be good, you surround yourself with the best. Boom. Come on. You, you, you know, level up by that way. It, you know, I, I've I had other people that have, that. you know, I've, I've come in contact with. But, you know, Chris Martinez, I think, is is, is awesome example. One of the humblest guys I've, I've met in the car business. No uh, doubt. The guy sold a thousand cars a month, and, and he's, he's still a friend, client. Um, you know, I pick his brain all the time, you know, and, and I, I, he's just, you know, when you put people like that in your circle, um, that, 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 that they make you better. They, 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 they inspire, you know, you, you gotta have, you know, a wolf pack almost. I guess. You're right, man. And you're, you're put, you put that so right. And folks, if you're not hearing what he's saying, you're not picking up what he's putting down is that who you surround yourself is who you become. Listen. If you put yourself around people who give up and quit and they, they don't care and they're not trying to grow, you're going to do the same thing. It's the way it works, folks. Just like when you grew up in high school, you when you hung out around people, if they were doing bad stuff, you started doing the bad stuff. If they were doing the right stuff, you were doing the right stuff. We and, all know how it is. It's it's hard for us as people. We we tend to move with the crowd. And, and even if you don't want to, it's just it's just kind of like what we do. So if you want to grow – Find five people that you think that are amazing or something like that. You know, it doesn't have to be five. I'm just saying, find people. He's talking about Chris Martinez. Folks, we just interviewed him the other day. This dude is, this dude is amazing. Chris is very humble, like he said. Chris is the kind of guy that if you called up and asked for advice, he's going to give it to you. He always finds time for people that are looking to grow. He's not, you know, he recognizes, real recognizes real, right? So what, when you, when you recognize that, it's easy to pour into them. Like, it's hard for me to pour into somebody I know that's full of crap. Like, I know that they're just going to, keep stumbling even though i could throw I, i've gave this guy 20 tips yet this guy never takes one and he keeps doing it and he keeps coming to me like he wants something it's like dude listen it's time for you to do it just do it you know and but you you definitely right on that you hit that on the that nail like bink, you knock it in one hit you're like 
you surround yourself with people that you want to emulate and you want to be like, you know, and you want to reach it. And so a matter of fact, it's like the whole hiring process. When you hire people, you want to hire people that are, if you're a B type person, you want to hire A type people to work for you because that will bring your level up. That will make you an A type person. And it's the way it works. And like, uh, you know, like Bear, I remember when I was in a, at Alabama, we watched a, a video in management class on who we thought the best manager was uh, right. ever. And they, they showed a, pit, a video of Bear Bryant. And, but he always surrounded himself with, you know, he had the guys that were smarter than him that knew the X's and O's. And, and then he also, you know, he had the guys that could motivate the players. I mean, he, just like you see now with, uh, that, that other coach that's, uh, in Tuscaloosa. Uh, what was that guy's name again? Oh, uh, gosh. I don't know, man. He's kind of new. <laughs> but he's on a different level, man. 